Hello. Uh, so we have just looked at the operation of the MOSFET differential pair under a common mode signal. And now we're going to take a look at its operation under a differential signal. And uh, I have brought back my balanced output and single-ended output schematics here. Uh, and I've also uh, copied and pasted my differential half circuits a little bit smaller, uh, as well as my input and output equations. Uh, just to keep them on the side so that if I need to refer to them at some point, um, I can do that. Um, I've made them smaller because so that I have more working area, if you will. Um, so let's go with case number B, operation of the circuits under a large differential input. And we have seen a prior video uh, what we mean by large, or what is the borderline of uh, what we consider a large differential input versus a small differential input. And we have seen that um, it is when um, the absolute value of the differential input, VID, uh, is less than, or excuse me, greater than, we are with large signal now, the square root of 2 times V O V. And we said that's the borderline because that is approximately the amount of voltage that will steer the current completely to one side or the other. So if we apply a differential signal of square root of 2 VOV uh, between uh, VG1 and VG2, we have essentially shifted or steered all the current through one branch of the circuit. The other one gets zero current transistor is in cutoff. Um, and another way of expressing this is uh, that VAD is between negative uh, square root of 2 VOV and positive square root of 2 VOV. There are two equivalent, equivalent ways of expressing the same idea. Um, now, the expression for the currents, uh, if we take into consideration, so basically taking uh, into consideration two factors. The fact that uh, VID is equal to that uh, VID is equal to VG1 minus VG2, and it's also equal to VGS1 minus VGS2, because essentially, um, in the first case, VG1 minus VG2 is the gate voltage uh, reference to uh, ground, and in the second case, it's reference to the source voltage. Uh, but again, since we are taking this differentially, uh, the two deltas are, are equal to each other. Uh, so if we take that into consideration and the fact that ID1 plus ID2 are equal to the tail current, which basically implies that we can, expre we can express ID1 as I minus ID2, and we can express ID2 as I minus ID1. Uh, if we take these two facts into consideration, we can write down the equations for ID1 and ID2 and mathematically manipulate them uh, to come up with the following expressions. Basically, we can come up with the following expressions for ID1 and ID2. And I'm not going to do all the mathematical manipulation, uh, but that can be found in, in most textbooks. So, so ID1 will be equal to I halves plus I divided by VOV times VID halves times the square root of one minus VID halves divided by VOV squared. And ID2, very symmetrically, is equal to I halves minus uh, the same thing, I divided by VOV times VID halves times 1 minus uh, VID halves divided by VOV squared. And notice that 
what this, what this gives us is an expression of ID1 and ID2 in terms of the differential input signal VID, uh, one could say VID halves, um, and also the overdrive voltage VOV, um, and, and well, as well as the, as the overall current I. Uh, the reason why this is useful is because it allows us to generate a normalized plot of the output current versus the input voltage. The output current will be ID, be it ID1 or ID2, um, and the input voltage is VIV. But we can normalize both values. How do we normalize them? Uh, well, by dividing the current, ID1 or ID2, by the overall current I, um, because that way the maximum value we will achieve is equal to 1. Uh, since I will be the overall current. And we can also normalize VID by dividing it by the overdrive voltage. So uh, in this case, we can come up with a normalized uh, representation of the current ID1 versus the input voltage VID. And again, the way we normalize it is we divide the current by, um, by the overall current I. So this will be ID divided by I, it's the normalized value. And this will be uh, the ID divided by the overdrive voltage. And if we were to plot that, uh, you can see uh, if you're even going to calculate this at the, um, at the borderline case where VID is equal to a square root of uh, square root of two times VOV or negative square root of two times VOV. Um, you can come up with the final values. And you can see that when VID is equal to a square root of two VOV, in that case you will get an ID one that is equal to um, to I. The overall current shift towards ID one because ID one gets the higher voltage. Um, and in the opposite case, when you apply negative square root VOV uh, to VID, that would mean that uh, M1 gets a negative voltage, right? Of negative square root of two VOV. And therefore all the current steers away from that branch and all the current is flowing now through M2 and zero current is flowing through M1. And so therefore, when I apply a negative voltage, I get uh, zero current. I'm going to do this with color. Zero current. To ID1. As I apply a voltage of zero, I get uh, one half of the current flowing through ID1. And then as I increase my voltage past the square root of two VO2, uh, then I get uh, the full current I flowing through ID1. And so if this is my ID1 plot, I can write the following. This is going to be a value of 1. When ID1 is equal to I, then the ratio of the two is going to be equal to 1. And this is going to be 0.5. When half of the current is flowing through ID1. So ID1 over I is equal to 0.5. Uh, this point where I have reached sort of my final value, that means I have steered uh, my, my current completely uh, to one branch or the other. Uh, in the case when I'm steering it towards ID1 is when my VID is positive and it's equal to square root of 2 VOV and so the 4 VID over VOV is equal to square root of 2 and in the negative direction it's just negative square root of 2. And I could come up with a similar plot for my ID2 except it's going to be the complement. So ID2 is going to have a value of a current of I flowing through it uh, when the input signal is, is negative, meaning the um, VG2 is sitting at a higher voltage than VG1. When VID is equal to zero, common mode signal, we have seen that case before, uh, the current is splits equally, so both branches get 0.5I. And then eventually, as my uh, voltage becomes more and more positive on the gate of uh, transistor M1, 
my current through the N2 branch goes to zero. That would be ID1, that would be ID2. Okay. Um, and so that's, you know, that's it for, uh, for what we want to know. Again, you can uh, go ahead and uh, you can enter the values of VID equals the square root of 2VOV or negative square root of 2VOV into the above equations to convince yourself that, um, that for that value, uh, one of the currents is going to give you equal to I and the other is going to give you approximately equal to zero. Okay. Uh, but that's it. That's basically what we're doing, steering the current into one, uh, one branch or the other. Now, the point that we are interested in as far as linear amplification goes is where my output is linearly related to my input, right? Uh, I want to build a linear amplifier. And that region happens uh, in between these two points. So this is the region. where there is a linear relationship between output and input, output current and input voltage. You see how the output current goes increasing linearly or quasi-linearly with the input voltage, okay? Uh, region where linear amplification is possible. All right, and we're going to take a closer look into that region in the next video. Thank you.